So, workers in Auckland's CBD are being told to stay home if at all possible. Do not go into work if you can avoid it, the minister has said. If you must go in, wear a mask. If you are in the city, wear a mask. They are recommending on public transport if you are taking a plane or travelling. They have given a list of locations of interest. We'll put those up on our Facebook page, but they do include various restaurants, coffee shops and Uber trips taken by the woman who is an AU student who went to work while she was infectious. Also revealed in that press conference was the fact that the woman was told to stay home. Once she was given a COVID test on Tuesday, she was told to stay home until the result was in. But following a conversation with her boss, she went to work regardless. Now, the woman in her 20s works at a women's fashion store in the CBD. And people from who have been into that fashion store, A to Z collection on High Street, are being told to isolate, get a test and wait at home until they know the results. The woman lives alone, but she is uh, located in a high-rise apartment block at 106 Vincent Street, which is in uh, Auckland Central. Now, health authorities are also warning people who live in that building or who have visited that building between the 7th of November and today they must also isolate, get a test and stay at home until they get the results, regardless of whether they are showing symptoms or not. And there will be some pop-up step, st- testing stations in and around Auckland and they say that they are taking a mobile testing station to that apartment block in Vincent Street tonight for residents. Well, a physics professor and COVID modeller, Professor Sean Hendy, is with us now. He's been listening to the press conference. Sean... How concerned should we be? Look, I I am concerned by this case. This is probably the most concerning case we've seen since the Auckland August outbreak. Um, You know, and 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 the thing that's worrying me at the moment is just that link to the border. And obviously, the 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 minister and and Caroline McElnay, we're we're, you know we're we're worried about that too. Um, And public health officials will be doing you know. What the, what they call what they would call backwards contact tracing to try and establish those links, um, and that'll really tell us what, what what we're dealing with. If there's a if overnight or early tomorrow we can establish a a, a clear link to the border, or, you know, to a worker, for example, from that MIQ facility that that neighbours the apartment building, then you know chances are we've got a contained situation. But the concern is that we're just looking at the tip of the iceberg and that maybe we've had several trains of transmission leading to this new case, in which case we'd be, we could be looking at a, at a few dozen other cases out there at the moment. Right, so you have done modelling around this kind of thing, modelling if a MIQ worker turns out to be positive, and also modelling if someone in the community with no connection is positive. How many cases does that modelling usually show will become infected from a community case that has no connection to MIQ. Yeah, so so we're looking at potentially dozens or several dozen cases. If it's if it's say three steps removed from the border, now at this stage we don't know. And of course in the Auckland August cluster we never actually found out the number of you know steps that, that took that case back to the border. But that's you know that that's a significant outbreak, several several dozen people. And that's the kind of stuff thing that would see us have to change alert levels. How important is the genomic testing going to be with this then? I think it'll be really crucial in in this case. You know, we know we've had a few cases um, in workers who have spent time in the CBD um, in in the last week. And if 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 a link could be established via genomics to one of those cases, then that, that would actually tell us that perhaps we're looking at a situation that's relatively contained. It would still be... Um, would still be concerned, right? And Aucklanders should still be really closely monitoring their symptoms and, and seeking a test if they've if they've got any of those COVID symptoms. Um, but in that situation, if we can see from the genomics that we have a pretty clear link to a known case, that'll reduce some of those risks. At the moment, they're still just asking people to wear a mask on public transport. The minister there advising, could you please wear a mask if you get on a plane or a bus? What do you think of that? Should it be well? Should it be compulsory right now? Yeah, look, I mean, I think I think we should be looking at that, and and certainly, you know, I've just I've observed over the last few weeks, um, people are wearing masks, you know, very infrequently um, on, on a bus. You might see a handful of people with a mask, and likewise on a, on a plane. 
So I think it is something that we either have to do just, just you know, much more uh, consciously as, as a society um, or, or airlines and bus companies need to start asking people to do that before they get on the plane again. Um, you know, or we do need to look at making it mandatory. I think that's something that, that uh, we should be considering. The Minister has indicated that um, he will meet with officials tomorrow, hopefully get more information and assess the alert levels. What would cause you to advise lifting alert levels? What would make you do that? Yeah, look, if, 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 if tomorrow there, can't, there, are, there aren't links established um, uh, to to an MIQ facility, to a worker in one of those facilities, then I think we have to look at it at an alert level um, change. They've obviously bought a little bit of time by asking people to stay at home who work in the CBD, so that includes me. I, I work at the University of Auckland, so I'll be working at home tomorrow. That that that's you know a little bit of a of a of a shift in alert levels. I guess it's not mandatory, but it's a request, um, and that does buy a little bit of time. Uh, but but if we really can't find where this case came from, came from, then we're potentially looking at a larger outbreak, and that does you know the the way the plan is written. Um, that that means we do need to look at a change in alert levels. Given all the publicity we've had, right, and all the the messages around health and safety, what is your response to the fact that this woman was told to stay home, wait for a test result, and then the boss says, I need you to come to work? Yeah, look, I mean, that's really disappointing. Um, You know, the message to employers is, is, you know, you should be um, ensuring that your staff uh, if they're unwell, are staying at home, you know, and, and obviously the consequences are that maybe um, that, that store is going to have to undergo a prolonged shutdown. Um, so that you know, a temporary inconvenience and in having a staff member sick at home, and and that's that maybe means a, a quite, quite long period of uh, of no business for that owner. So really, we we, we need employers to be responsible, um, you know, and, and this is for the benefit of your customers, um, your business as well as your staff. How critical is the next 24 hours, do you reckon? Look, I think it, I think it's pretty important. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure we'll learn more in the next 24 hours. Um, we, we will likely get the genomics uh, uh, back. Hopefully that's that's being worked on at the moment. Um, you know, sometimes that's a, there's a logistical issue in, in getting the, the, the swabs from um, the, the source to the facility. Uh, in Auckland, that shouldn't be as big a problem. Um, so we should be looking at having genomic information back relatively soon. That'll be an important clue. And then the contact traces as well, doing that, that upstream contact tracing, trying to establish a link. So, so look, it is, it is going to be a, a, a nervous uh, 24 hours, I think, um, as, as Auckland waits to hear more about this case. You said you would be minded to move up the alert levels if it's not identified, uh, the source is not linked to the border or MIQ relatively quickly. If you were in charge, what deadline would you give yourself? 10 o'clock tomorrow, midday, if you don't have that information, when would you move? That, that, that's a really tough one, uh, Lisa. I, I, think, I think it depends on what they're looking at tomorrow morning. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to know what information will be generated by the, the contact tracing interviews. Um, uh, you know, and also, you know, the, the other thing, I guess, is that people will be going to get tested at the moment. Um, I think that's a really important thing uh, for, for Aucklanders to be getting tests. And, and we'll be looking to see whether any of those tests come back positive as well. I think that's that's a critical thing. That would be a sign uh, if we do pick up uh, uh, tests in the community and those tests are not the result of contact tracing or within the building, for example, then that, again, is a, is a worrying sign. So you won't be going into physically into work tomorrow. Your advice to, to other Aucklanders? Yeah, no, look, I mean, if you can work from home, uh, stay at home. You know, if you do need to go to work, you know, take all those extra precautions, wear the mask, um, uh, you know, with, if you're taking public transport. Um, you know, maybe think about whether you need to have that meeting or that or that face-to-face interaction tomorrow. And, again, you know, and, and, and just be aware of, 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 uh, of symptoms. You know, don't dismiss that, that, that cough. Um, yeah, just go get that test if you've got any of the symptoms. Sean, just before you go, has the government been in contact with you over this case? Uh, not specifically over this case. I mean, we've run sets of scenarios, so they have they have information from us to use in this type of case. Um, look, if it if it if this does, um, you know, if we do find other cases as a result of this one, then we'll be back running models again. 
Um, but at the moment, they have the information from us that they need to make decisions. Appreciate you joining us this evening. That is physics professor and COVID modeller, Sean Hendy.